Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. I'm Natasha, this is Witchcraft Daily. So if you remember my last video, I made this beanie here and I called it the Bounty, bounty Beanie. <coughs> now, th that video was not a tutorial, it was just bringing you along in an experiment because I've seen this done on another video from an Italian crafter but she wasn't um, explaining in depth the actual pattern so I pretty much went with it, winged it, see what I'll come out with it so it, I mean it's okay, not perfect obviously, it's fun um, but clearly there are a few things that needed to be um, changed and fixed in order for this to become a proper tutorial. First thing first, the machine. So in the previous video I used my 46 needle machine just because she was using the same machine and I thought okay let, let's try it um, and it gave me a chance to use the Addy because I don't use it very much. But obviously the pattern, the way the, the count is, it doesn't work with 46 needles, but it does work with 48. So I did a, a test run to properly make the beanie and this is what came out. So it, it's really nice, it's a nice fun pattern. Um, I did this time uh, 10 row less of pattern so this is a re three time repeat no sorry six time repeat instead of nine so this these are 60 rows and then I added another 70 if I remember correctly and that gave me a little bit of a brim and the inside but when I was making this and putting it together I did notice something that uh, it sparked my interest so today we are gonna do the pattern section together so it's properly made and I'll show you exactly what needs to be done and how it needs to be done but then, once we finish the pattern, we are going to take another route. So, once we finish the pattern, you can choose either to follow along and make this something different. Or just knit another 60, 70 rows, depending on how big you want your beanie and how big you want your brim to create the brim section on the inside. Okay, so let's get cranking. So let's start with a cinch tail cast on. I'm not going to go too uh, slow on it actually at all. If you're completely new on the cast on method, there is a video on my channel that I'll show you in detail exactly what needs to be done. But you start from your first needle and then you weave your yarn back and front every other needle until you do the round. <coughs> A reminder, this is not part of the row count, so this is the moment you want to reset your counter. And we start with knitting nine rows.
Okay, this is me finishing the ninth row. We now need to start the one row of pattern. So grab your crochet hook, whatever feels comfortable for you. And we are going to start on needle number one. So you stretch your work and you count six stitches down one two three four five six you grab it and you put it on top of your needle you put it on top of the needle let me zoom in a little bit It's in top of the needle and underneath the hook. So now you're gonna crank and basically your needle number one is gonna knit two strands. Then you knit normally the next two needles and on needle number four you do the same. You count six stitches down from this. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Six. <laughs> and you need to and you need to. Now, it is very easy to lose count, especially on your first row. So what I like to do is, one, two, three. already slide my hand to the needle, to, to the stitch, to the needle that needs to be picked up. Now, where is not a deal breaker if you're maybe picking up the sixth stitch here, but maybe here it was the seventh, one or one up or one below the sixth stitch is not a problem. It doesn't really reflect on the finished product, but if you start messing up, the pattern of picking one up and leading two, picking one up and leading two, then obviously that uh, will be more visible. We knit the last two of the row. <coughs> Sorry. 
So we've done a total of 10 um, rows, being the 10th our pattern row, and now we knit another 9. Okay, so um, now that we have reached or finished our ninth knitting row, we start our second repeat pattern. In this case, instead of starting from needle number one like we did before, we start from needle number two. So one knits and then you pick up two. and. Again, you count six stitches down. You knit two, and then you pick the sixth stitch down. You knit two. See, you can also see if you've been going if you missed something because this is the previous row pattern. But obviously, you need to then be on the next one. Now 
now that we finished our second row of pattern, we have arrived at 20. We need to knit another nine rows. We now need to do our row of pattern. So I reached row 29, row 30 will be the pattern. In this case, you might have guessed it. We started with one, we did the second row of pattern with two, and now we do the third row of pattern with needle number three. So one and two are knitted, and we pick up three. And it's still the sixth row down. And we finished our third row of pattern. So we are now at 30 rows. We need to do another 30 rows like this. So we start again from needle one, then the second row pattern will be needle, needle two, third row pattern, needle three. Now we'll bring you up to 60 rows. Then it's up to you if you want to add another set of three and bring the count to 90 or stop there and then knit the rest. I'm gonna stop at 60 rows so I'm gonna do another um, set of three and that's it. This decision making and this is why I thought about it. Let me do something for you. A moment. So. Can you see it? 
this is making uh to me at least a lovely pattern that is obviously completely different from this one and that is why i want to have this on the outside now you may think okay just keep going and just fold it inside out so this is on the outside and you can do it but by doing it like that if you have a little bit of a brim the brim will show the pearl side and it is entirely up to you if you want to go for that look then happy days i would still like to have the knit side showing up so that means that we need to take this off the machine, turn it side out and put it back onto the machine. Because I like to make things easier. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do two rows of normal knit. One. Just to tidy up the, the pattern section. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to obviously keep the yarn. I'm not going to cut the working yarn. I'm going to start bringing down. So obviously it's, it, we are casting off, right? Grab a contrasting yarn. Let's start picking up stitches, but I'm also putting. Okay, let's do this. A stitch marker on my very first needle. My help, my notch, but I like. To have a stitch marker so i actually know which is my first needle you might say well the last is your the one that the tail is coming out true but it's just a, an additional an additional reference telling you it's gonna be tricky You could do this with um with circular needles for hand knitting if you have them thin enough that could also help
Okay. As you can see, this is the the pattern. So if you kept going and you kept knitting another again 60, 70 rows, then you would have had a proper beanie completed, double layered with this on the outside. But I want this on the inside. Like this. I just drop my needle. So now that we are uh, putting the, the project back onto the machine, the easier way is to just hook the stitches back on underneath the needle, but underneath the hook. So in this first round, the needles will take the stitch down with them and then your second round is going to bring it back up and we can start actually knitting. And this is the moment that you want to really have a loom pick handy. I'm putting this back. Oh. I'm putting this back in the wrong way. Oh. Sorry, guys, I just lost concentration. But thankfully, I've seen it. Here at the beginning, so I'm just picking back up those stitches. So what we want is the pattern that I want it to be on the outside. to be facing the inside of the machine.
more you get closer to the end of the round and trickier it gets so take your time guys it is a labor of love Almost there. Okay, so let's feed the yarn in the yarn feeder. Make sure that now the loops are going down. Okay. Okay. So I am going to now reset my counter. I know I did sixty rows of pattern. Then I did extra three rows just to two to close up the pattern side and one just now just to secure the, the project back into the machine. 
So that brings me to 63. Um, let's do another 62. That brings us to 125. Let's do another 62 to get to 160, to 125, and then I'll decide then if I want to add extra five rows or not. need to change yarn as I don't have enough of this one. Let's see. Just thinking of a color that doesn't show up too much. don't have anything else except this so I'm going to just use this it should fall into the inside of the, the hat so hopefully it's not gonna show too much but who knows it might be it might give even more interest to the pattern
Okay, so this should have taken me to a total of 125 rows. Um, let's leave it at this. Let's cast off and see what we have. Again, I'm not going in details on the cast off. I have a video for that too, but it's the same video for the cast on. So if you are unsure, check that one out first. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And see what we have inside. Let's see what we have created. Ready? Um, let's close this up. I like it. So let's turn this inside. I was going to say inside out, but it's not inside out. But you get what I mean. I'm literally exhausted. Okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm just picking up a couple of stitches just to make sure that it keeps it shut and tight. Okay. 
<lacht> Abend schafft. I am shoved. This yarn here, this pinky one here, is not really the best. It was a a cheapy one, and you can tell. But now that we know what to expect, we can go ahead and make another one with the better yarn. So video tutorials are not just about telling you exactly how to do one thing. It's also to show you the thought process behind the patterns that you see. And how people can come up with new ideas. Um, a lot of times it's just by chance, just by testing, just by trying just by going for a, a thought that you had in your mind and then realizing that maybe you can do actually something completely different then maybe better So again, I have not seen this around and um, so I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not really copying or taking credit for something that somebody else has already come up with but I haven't seen it done. But if that's the case then apologies that I don't know who you are or how you did it. For me, it was just out of chance by making the second bouncy beanie. I realized that the inside was looking even nicer. I mean, look at that. Look at that. love it love it and like any other beanie you can stick a pompon on it yeah up to you what you want to do with it okay i hope you liked it I hope that um, you understand the way I work and do things with my videos. Some things are actually pure tutorials, other things are more of a trial run that I'm taking you with me for it and see what happens then. But that's the thought process. I saw a video, I got inspired, I tried it. Then I made a, a better one and from this I noticed that the reverse of the pattern was actually giving me something that I liked even more and I, I and I'm happy that this worked out so it, it really gives that almost mushroomy kind of feeling Let me know what you think about it guys. I'm sure this video has become an extortionally long. So I'm not gonna take any more of your time. 
thank you for being with me again uh thank you for supporting the channel if you haven't subscribed yet do so because that obviously helps me keep it up and i shall see you next time bye guys